Did you ever wonder how we can pull a large amount of data from websites? This is John from Java Code Geeks and today I'm going to show you how to write clean and efficient code in Python by using web scrapping. Web scrapping is a famous way to extract data from websites. Web scrapping software can directly access the World Wide Web using the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or a web browser. Now, complementary to this video tutorial, you can find related articles and resources in the description below. Of course, you can visit Java Code Geeks to stay up to date with everything Java related. Just before we continue, if you guys like these guides and videos, take a minute to subscribe, like and hit that notification bell just so you know when the next video is up. So with no further ado, let's get started. Web scrapping is an automated method that is used to extract large amount of data from websites. The data on websites are unstructured and with this method we can collect this unstructured data and we can store it to a structured form. There are two ways to extract data from websites. The first is to use the API of the website such as Facebook has the Facebook Craft API and the second is to access to the HTML of the website and extract all the information that you want from it. Of course, there is an important question that needs to be answered. Is web scrapping illegal? Some websites allow web scrapping and some others don't. To know which website allows web scrapping, we need to take a look to the robots.txt file. You can find this file by appending slash robots.txt to the URL that you want to scrap. In this section, we will talk about how we can scrap data from a web page. When we run the code for web scrapping, a request has sent to the URL. The server sends us a response the data and allows us to read the HTML or XML page. After that, the code parse the HTML or XML page, select and find the data that we want to extract and we extract it. To extract the data that we want, we need to follow the steps below. At first, we need to find the URL that we want to scrap. Secondly, we inspect the page. Thirdly, we select and find the data that we want to extract. Furthermore, we need to uh, run the uh, code and extract the data that we want. And last but not least, we store the data in a required format. An interesting question is where we collect such data. So let's see the most important reasons that we use web scrapping. At first is the price comparison. The services use the web scrapping because it can collect data from online shopping websites to compare the prices of products. Secondly, email address gathering because companies use the emails for marketing and web scrapping is used to collect these emails to send back bulk emails. Thirdly is the social media scrapping because a web scrapping is used to collect data from social media websites such as Facebook and last but not least is the job listing because web scrapping is used to collect data for job openings and interviews and store them in order to be accessible to the user. The main advantages of web scrapping are, at first it is highly accurate. The web scrappers help us to eliminate the human error from operations so we are confident that the information that we receive is accurate. Secondly is the cost efficiency. The web scrappers are cost efficient because we can gain access to a completely automated solution that requires zero infrastructure and last but not least is pinpointed because web scrappers help us to filter exactly the points, the data points that we are looking for so we can collect the data that we want. This saves us time and money. Of course, there are some disadvantages which are at first it is difficult to analyze because web scrapping can be confusing for those who is not getting involved with programming and secondly is the speed and protection policies because many websites don't allow screen scrapping so it is a huge challenge to do web scrapping. In this section, we will show you an example for web scrapping. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a new file with a name example. Then we need to import some libraries in order to create the web scrapper, which are the beautiful soup and the request 
packages but first we need to install them so we need to open the terminal and uh, to install these two packages with the help of the pip keyword which is the package installer in python the last step is to import these two libraries inside the class and now we are ready to write our program to create a web scrapping code, at first we need to find a page or a website that can be crawled. In this case, we need to use a page from Java Code Geek's website. So, the next step is to create a new URL variable which has the URL of the page that we want to scrap. We do a request to take the HTML file with the help of the get method and we print this file with the help of the prettyfy method which return a parse tree into a formatted Unicode string. As we can see, the HTML file was printed. Now, let's talk about how we can find some information about the article with the help of HTML tags. For example, here let's find out the article's title with the help of the title tag. Of course, the file can have more than one title tag, but if we write the command doc.title and print it, we can see that it returns the information about only the first title tag. In case that we want to print uh, all information about all tags about a specific tag, then we can use the find all method. So for example, here we use the find all method with the h2 tag and we print the results. As we can see, all the information about the H2 tags was printed. In the output, we can see that inside the H2 tags there are more HTML tags such as a tag or image tag which are called as nested tags. For this example, we use only the first H2 tag of the article by writing the number 0 inside the bracket next to the find all method. In order to print the nested tag, we need to use the find all method for the first h2 tag, we write the image tag inside the parentheses and we print it. As we can see, the output gives us the information of the image tag. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to our channel. We have some really cool stuff coming up. Bye!